It's a lovely day today and we're going to take a look at 3C Max 2020.1, the update that has come to it, which is the tier of viewport. There is also a couple of other updates, but we'll focus on the tier of viewport in this particular review. I'll tell you everything you need to know about the tier of viewport and we're also going to examine other apps that has something like this and see if it actually stacks up or if it measures up to these apps. And so if you're very interested to learn something today or you want to get into this review, View. let's get started so the floating viewport itself is something that never existed before so if you're working with 3d studio max previously you would you had no idea how much time you were you know losing for not having multi viewports okay multi windowed viewport so how this thing works is if you come over to this section and you go over to the floating viewport and you click on Floating viewport one, it should replicate this, but oh my, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. All right. So there is a problem with this, but then it is not a problem. It is a problem from a point if you are coming from various apps. So if you're coming from an app like Cinema 4D, for example, or you're coming from an app like Blender or Maya, of course, you're going to see this as a huge problem. All right. You're going to see it as a huge problem because by default, once you click over from here and go over to something like floating viewport, you should have exactly this viewport floating, all right? You should have exactly this viewport floating. But then that is not what happens. You can see for the second floating viewport, I'm having something totally different. So you can see I have a perspective here and I also have another perspective, which simply means it doesn't replicate the same perspective that I have. So you are wondering what's going on and what's going on is this particular kind of floating viewport that has been made available by the guys at Autodesk. It's totally different. 3D Studio Max just gets to do things totally different, all right? And that's the same thing that's happening here. So the floating viewport that exists here is actually saved camera scenes, or should I say saved camera uh, positions in, in space. It doesn't get the floating, it doesn't get the viewport and floats it. As it says, it doesn't do that. It doesn't float the viewport. It only saves the camera position of a certain viewport. All right. So let's say, for example, and uh, this is floating viewport too. Okay. So let's say, for example, I zoom all the way to a point like this. All right. This is a different camera that is not the perspective camera. We have a perspective here, but there is a whole lot of instanced perspective, which is about three because you know they gave us only three of these things to work with which is about three that you can work with and funny enough within this part you still have another section that says floating viewport which actually raises a couple of questions okay so you have this and this is a camera selection that has been saved it doesn't mean that you have a floating uh instance of your stuff which makes sense from a certain point and on the different point if you're coming from other apps it totally doesn't make that much sense okay so for you to work with this it simply means you need to save a camera selection and at any point in time it doesn't matter whether you're on the top view whether you're on the left right front view once you go back and open the viewport too it is the same camera selection that you have that is saved to me this is a I don't know. So what is the difference between you saving cameras? Okay. What's the difference between you saving camera views and this? I still don't see the big difference within this thing. I just see it as a virtual camera that gets to be saved. And so you can go back and forth and, and, and look at it. But to me, it doesn't make so much sense because for me to actually go to top view, it simply means that if I want to redock this, okay, if I want to dock this out, I should be able to dock this. I mean, that was the idea I had. I should be able to come through, dock this out, and then take it to a different monitor and maximize that there. But no, what happens is to save that camera position from you for you, and you have to come through, go through a top view, and then you have to, you know, go over here and change it to wireframe. All right, it doesn't really, it, to me, I don't really know. I don't really, I want to know what you guys think about that. Because if we look at other apps, like Blender, for example, which is always an amazing app to talk about, okay? So like Blender, for example, if you want to create a brand new window or a brand new viewport, so we're going to start with creating a brand new window. So if you want to create a brand new window, what happens is you could see this selection that I have here, or you can see this viewport that I have here. If we go over to window, all right if we go over to window and i say brand new window see what happens i get exactly the same window yes of course you can see that the shelf are still here 
but the core menus that I need are just here. All right. So at this point, this brings me to second thing that I think these guys should have done when they were considering creating this thing. So the second thing is I should be able to switch with this floating viewport. All right. So I should be able to switch to other sections. Okay. Maybe, maybe switch to like shader editor, for example, or maybe switch uh, to image editor, you know, switch to something else, but no, that doesn't happen. And to me, I don't know what's going on with this. All right. So this is something I really wish they would have been able to do. I mean, even if they were not going to add up the whole, you know, you can switch from this, to um graph editor even though they were not able or they were not going to add that i mean for me to be able to switch from what i have okay to something totally different would have been nice i'm going to take something that does exactly that as an example so we have um cinema 4d here i'm just doing this so that a couple of people can get the idea so we have cinema 4d here i'm just going to go ahead and put a simple plane on the floor and let's just move this plane all the way down okay so i'm just going to go ahead and pick up this plane and position this plane down there and let's just scale this so that we can see so if i come through all right this is what i felt we were going to see if i come over here and i need a new view panel all right it's a different screen already because that was how i set it up to be you can see i have exactly the same panel all right the same panel guys of course you cannot do the whole uh, crazy switching thing that you can do with blender but it makes a lot of sense for me because you can now just have this and you can push it over to the other side the idea of switching this to me doesn't really make sense so that, this brings me to the second thing which i also noticed the second thing which i noticed is this once you're not within a certain viewport that viewport automatically becomes inactive and this might be a good thing and it could be a bad thing i don't know so let's say i'm working with a multi-view port like this all right first of all this is good but i wish it was more than you know i wish it, it did exactly what it was doing but then i have added a couple of lights here and this is set to high quality by default this should act automatically you know retrace or do whatever it's doing get active on the viewport but this doesn't happen for some reason it just doesn't happen if i'm just moving around and i just zoom this all the way back and switch to a different window to work i don't see an update for this I mean, I'm still within this window, just the fact that I'm not playing with it or I'm not setting it to be an active window, nothing is happening. Yes, you can say it's for performance and for all that stuff, but I really wish this is going to work out because imagine working with three different windows and you want to actually see what's happening when you're shading and you want to also see what's happening when you're doing something in a different viewport and you get to see yourself stuck in something like this. I don't know how you guys are going to react to it. On our uh, improvement, which I saw, or another thing which I saw is spacebar. So with the spacebar now, you can now play, you can now search, maximize your viewport, disable viewport and all that. I don't know if this was existent before because I've always used the Maya um, hotkey. So tell me if you've seen it before. Next up, we are going to look at the hotkey. So the hotkey has been set to have a couple of improvements, which is so true because now you can come here and you can search for a couple of things. So once you type the word bevel, and you can see all of the bevels that exist you can go in there make your shortcuts by yourself and if you're using a different key set like i was using which was maya you would notice that automatically once you install this update it's definitely going to change this thing for you all right it's going to change it back to 3 Studio max so you have to come back and change it to maya so you can now search for actions and at the same time you can search for hotkeys so depending on what you're doing at any given point in time these are things that you can go ahead and play with and to me i think this is a very good improvement you can still go through save and export these things out like if you cl click here you can export them out and you can also you know reload them back in so i would uh, really give these ones a pass but for the viewport thing i don't know what you guys think about it to me i think it is really nice but it could have been a bit better i mean uh matching with the other standards of other viewports expansion or other floating viewport that exists or other floating panels that exist in various apps so i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section tell me what your take about this is and that's going to be about it and if you like this video you know what to do go ahead and hit the like button and also turn on notification and if you're new here it's going to be amazing if you can hit the subscribe button you know and also turn on notifications so you don't miss the next video the next update the next tutorial and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update review 
review free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace